want to give a shout out to our sponsor today, Green Chef. Green Chef is yummy, yummy in my tummy. Listen, Green <laughs> Chef, it's a it's a name after my own heart. After yeah. All, my last name is, is green. associated with a she- with chefs. Oh, wait. Well, it's also green. Oh, right. But yeah, no, I'm thinking about how like lettuce, right. green beans, all that kind of stuff. Like a lot of chefs use those chefs? Sort of ingredients. Chefs? Yes, a lot of chefs use, <laughs> use those ingredients. And so I was thinking right. about that connection. But yeah. I, brought up something I think about how you're the antithesis of a chef. Um, I've re- recalled many a burned oven in my days with you. But um, but I, held, I cooked a hell of a carrot cake one time. Yeah. And Green Chef helps you cook so you don't have to be a hell of a chef because it'll be the chef for you. It's the most sustainable meal kit, is offsetting 100% of its direct carbon emissions and plastic packaging in every box. You can feel great about what you're eating and how it got to your table. And listen, we've worked with HelloFresh in the past, too, and we love both of these companies. Yes. They are so, they make life so much easier. And they're friends in real life as well. Well, there you go. They are. Are they all chefs? They're all chefs together, which is huge for my family. I know that. Come on, go to greenchef.com. Slash 90 S T D T Y and use code 90 S T D T Y. That's 90 S T D T Y. To get $90 off, including free shipping. How much more can we bring this deal to you? Exactly. We're bringing this deal. No matter your diet, we got you. Okay, shout out to Pretty Litter. You ever heard of it? I have. I have you it have. My, I have it in my home. We have four cats, four of them. We are authorities on the We're subject. We're those people. That have four cats, and uh, we go through a lot of litter at a time. And if you know a state to move to where you can have more cats, let us know. You, you can imagine the amount of kitty litter we go through. We actually have five litter boxes, so we need a lot of litter. And what's cool about Pretty Litter is it's litter reinvented, unlike traditional litter. Pretty Litter's super light crystals, Dust they, free. Tr- they trap odor and release moisture, resulting in dry, low-maintenance litter that doesn't smell. It's, it's manufactured true. with a de-dusting process, so when you pour it out, you don't choke on it. But you don't smell it. No, you don't. You have no idea. Yeah, like, it's right outside your office, and you never smell I it. I don't smell it ever. I really don't, actually. I actually, like, I run because the treadmill is in the room that has the kitty, kitty litter boxes, yep. and I run right next to the litter box. I can't smell anything. I Sometimes, at night... 12.30 in the morning, I stick my head in the litter box. <laughs> don't smell a thing. No, you don't. I actually don't smell a thing, though. Pretty Litter arrives safely at our door in a small, late, a lightweight bag that lasts up to a month. So now that we get litter bags auto-shipped, we don't have to deal with last-minute trips to the store, which is awesome. And then shipping is free. But above all else, here's why Pretty Litter is a pet parent's hero. It's a health indicator. Do you know about this? Yes. Well, tell them. Well, it changes color. Based on when it detects underlying potential issues, yeah. which I don't think anybody else even has anything close to that. That's magic. So get the world's smartest litter without leaving home by visiting prettylitter.com and using promo code STDTY for 20% off your first order. That's prettylitter.com, promo code STDTY for 20% off. Prettylitter.com, promo code STDTY. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Hello, welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. I'm Nikki Limo, and this is Steve Green, also known as the Iceman, also known as Ace, also known as Crypto King, also known as the Miracle Man. Um, we're drinking today. What, you have another one? I thought you were going to incorporate sometimes Steve or Gaping Shining Light. Asshole Boy? No, don't that is no, gape, that's Yeah, one. that is that's also another one. nickname that's for him. One. So, Sorry, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Well, today we have a very special episode indeed. I didn't, I didn't drink after we cheers. Oh, well, that's bad luck. We have to do yeah, it again. Yeah, I know. Do it again. Okay. Sorry, everybody. So we, we made drinks. Cheers. I cleaned the whole house today. I need this. Uh, did you do it alone? Mm-hmm. Did you really? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> I have a theory about that, but that's okay. okay. Aliens? Uh, not exactly. Kind of. Yeah, I guess. Definitely technology. <laughs> okay. Um, Nikki's into meth now, guys. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so today we are talking about one of my very favorite subjects in the whole wide universe. No, it is not crypto. You probably are disappointed, right? Speaking of crypto, um, <clears throat> real ever so briefly and quickly, if you have um, if you have heard of my crypto stances, then you have maybe perhaps heard that there is a place to go for all of my crypto um, things, which is called Crypto Corner, and it's on me and Nikki's Patreon. 
patreon.com slash sticky. And There's a link in the bio. A lot, I mean, of, link in the description. a lot of great folks in there. We're all making interesting moves. And yeah, I basically like, I share my screen with you. I show you everything that I'm You say interesting like it's it's bad. It's really good moves. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. It's very fun. But when you say interesting, it makes it sound like, well, if he was doing good, like he would have said good, but he is kicking oh, ass. Oh yeah, no, everyone's kicking ass. Dude. Yeah. It's, a, it's fun. It's been fun. So we're having a good time and uh, yeah, so check it out. If yeah, you I don't like. know shit about crypto, but he's really good at breaking it down for people. Love the shit. Just like I love this shit. And by this shit, I'm talking, of course, about alien you. uh, UFOs. UFOs. Aliens. We don't know if they're aliens. aliens. We just we don't know. Uh, yeah. The whole point of UAPs yeah, or unidentified aerial phenomena is that we are not implying we to know. We fucking do. Oh, come on. What are you talking about? All right. Continue. Okay. So did you know that in 1952, there was a CIA group and they were called the Psychological Strategy Board. And they basically came together and said, when it comes to UFOs, we're so gullible as the American people. Yes. And we're so prone to hysterical mass behavior that they recommended debunking campaigns to temper the interest in UFOs and all the unexplained shit. I see. But the government was, at the same time, investigating this stuff on their own. So they were trying to dampen the way that we look at this stuff while they investigated. I see. They so get to investigate. Like, we get to follow right. silly crumbs. Yes. Yes. Because they're like, until we figure this. It's like mom and dad, like, here, play with your toys while we're, we're figuring something out right now. Exactly. Gotcha. So, um, and, and for years, people have come out and talked about government programs. I mean, Mexico, Canada, the UK, a lot of them have disclosed their own UFO files. And like basically the conclusions are all the same. They have no idea what the fuck they are. Yeah. There are a lot of sightings that are bullshit. Like that are For sure. not at all what people think they are. But there are a lot of sightings. They just literally don't know what they are. Yeah. I mean, and that's telling because it's like if all of these countries are coming out saying they don't know what it is, then it's not their war crafts. You know, because that's that was the whole thing is right. like back then we were kind of like between wars and stuff. And you didn't want to like talk too much about UFOs because what if, what if it was a country's Warcraft and then now we're giving it away that we know that we saw it or and we that know they have would. better tech than us. Yes, exactly. And it creates hysteria but that way. But now it's like okay, we're kind of like sharing info. Like, or okay, is that is that yours? No, it's not yours. Okay, go fish. Yes. And it's it's very intriguing to say so, the least. Some context too, real quick. A personal story. I saw a UFO when I was a kid, moving from from Virginia to to San Diego, California. It yes. was in 1996. It was in the winter time, and we're driving in Flagstaff, Arizona, and we saw this very 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 bright light in the sky, and it was just hanging out up there. Didn't move, didn't do anything. It was there for like 20 minutes and it was just chilling there. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a, f a cloud formed around it, right? Yeah. It wasn't a cloud in the sky, by the way. Like a donut. A, a donut shaped cloud formed around it. You've heard me do this story. Yes. And it sucked inside of itself and completely dissipated and vanished and the cloud was gone. Wow. Not like smoke or whatever. It was a flare that like slowly degraded right yeah it had a f oval shape that formed around it sucked inside the cloud disappeared i wasn't the only person who saw it my whole family saw it my sister saw it my brother nate saw it my little brother kenny saw it but he was very young i wouldn't trust him mm -hmm. um but yeah it was, it was crazy my grandma saw it <clears throat> and we all like didn't couldn't explain it and that's all i saw I don't, i'm not telling everyone i saw an alien spacecraft yeah I just don't know what the fuck I saw. An alien spacecraft. But I think it was an alien spacecraft. <laughs> and that's what I want to say. Uh, on the record. Thank you. So, uh, have you seen anything like that before? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. Mm, I wish. That would be tight. Honestly, but then I'm like, okay, but I would like to say I wish, but then if I actually picture seeing it, I think I'd be freaked out of my fucking mind. So, I'm kind of glad that I haven't seen I, anything I, like I that. I think that ever since then, I've been elevated interest on this topic yeah. in particular. It's kind of like any paranormal activity, by the way. Like I am so intrigued by it, but I don't ever want to experience it. Yeah. Like the few experiences that I've had with it, I like to brush off like that's not what it was. And now that I've seen one, like I am obsessed with the idea of seeing another one because I think 
I didn't get to appreciate it the first time. Yeah, you it's were It's almost kid. like I won a Super Bowl, and I was like, oh, I just got in the league. <laughs> it was like, like your rookie year. Yeah, whatever. Oh, this happens. This is going to happen six more times. And then yeah. like, I'm at the end of my career, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got to see another one. Like, that's how it feels in a weird yeah, way. Yeah, I get that. Okay, so um, the the Pentagon recently confirmed the existence. So we're the, like the only country that hasn't stepped forward and said yes we have been looking into this for years, right? Mm. There's a, there a thing called Project Blue Book in the 70s, I think, or 60s or 70s, where they were investigating UFO uh, phenomenon, but they basically said, like, you know, we, we can't come to any conclusions. Yeah. They didn't really come out and say, like, this this is um, an active thing that we're looking at. They always say, hey, we looked into this shit, and we closed the program. Mm. They do it every time. So... Recently, they confirmed the existence of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or ATIP. Okay, this was created in 2007 by a senator named Ted Stevens, who reported being chased by a mysterious object. Daniel In O In Hu, I think, and then uh, Senate Majority Re- Majority Leader Harry Reid, who's from Nevada, and it got funded with 22 million dollars of black money from the Department of Defense's budget. And the program investigated and checked out UFO sightings, many of which came from our own military. And the they still can't talk about what they found. Like Harry Reid has Why? been interviewed about it. Exactly. Why? They because I mean it's just like above we're pay all grade, like it's been generations. Like we're fine. Like we are not going to believe a radio show about aliens. Okay. Like we're fine. But the things that we do know from it yeah. is that they collected data. They identified five observations that showed mysterious objects displaying, displaying some level of advanced physics, also known as, you know, that defies our laws. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. Uh, Everything we know to, uh, is, that is true about aerodynamics and science and physics is uh, this Is somehow being defeated. cheated here. Yes. Right. The objects would accelerate with G-forces that are too strong for the human body to withstand. We're talking like at some points 600 to 800 G's, Mm. which is... I'm just going to pretend I know how fast that is. I mean, that's just absolutely brutal. Um, How fast is an airplane? Well, G-forces is different because G-forces is the amount of... Like when you're in an airplane that's moving and then the the airplane like turns. Yeah. You know that force that you're feeling? That's G-force. Oh. So how it feels super heavy. It's like that fair game where you sit on, you lay on the back of that yeah. uh, wheel and it spins you Isn't around and around. It's called centrifugal really force. It's, it's kind of like that. But the idea behind it is, I mean, what you're experiencing is the G forces that are holding you down. Oh. Like the gravity forces that are keeping you still. I see. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what the G- average G forces is on an aircraft. By the way, hot question. tip. For all you shampoo users out there, this is not going uh, into what? a uh, this is not going into a sponsorship. No, 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 uh, no. But like, it reminded me that you know that last bit of shampoo at the bottom that you can't like get out. You can use centrifugal force or G force to get it out by spinning it in the shower like this, and then it gets it. You hold it at the bottom and it go like, and you spin it like this, and it how do you flings have room? it all into. How do you have any fucking room in there? Well, you kind of like T Rex arm. Big it. is your shower? You kind of T Rex arm it. Like oh, T Rex arm. Yeah. It. Okay, I like it. But yeah, it it's helped a lot. Well, I don't do that. I open the new bottle. A I open the new bottle when there's that. even like a little bit of, the, of it on the bottom because I like I yeah, enjoy to, the experience of opening the bottle. Just to get it down to the to the top, though, to like how do you get it all? How do you get the product there? It's all stuck to the bottom. You add water to it and you shake it. Oh, you're trash. I am trash. Thank you. I'm from white trash lineage as well. All you science, you use your trash. We're method. from the cradle of civilization for the white people, which is Florida. So I think <laughs> I think yeah, I am trash. Okay. Okay, folks. So. Luis Elizondo, he ran the program ATIP until last October, right? He's talked about metamaterials that were recovered from UAP. What's that? <clears throat> Materials that are not of this earth. Why can't they say things like well, normal people? Why do they have to name it like not the UFO program, but the like arrow tip net, A-tip. like whatever the fuck. Yeah, advanced and, and then they're like, threat identification program. you know, the things that they're doing are what is it like defies physics or something like that yeah like why can't they just say there's some sh- like shit going on like there's some crazy sh- like we found some shit that doesn't we've never seen before on our planet ever like why do they got to make it seem so whatever like so casual well when you get into the way that our own scientific community is investigating like uh subatomic product uh, particles and yeah. um 
a lot of the the laws of our physics get broken there too and they're just starting to really get a grasp on that anyway i want to know about the metamaterials, metamaterials? yeah the metamaterials doesn't that sound like something that wolverine would have in his claws yes like okay way to make it sound interesting and then not go further with it okay that's all they have sorry but like that's i'm not that's on them not on you i'm just saying no, I know, like but, like like describe the materials to us geez like fucking give us a well, wet dream here, about I'll it i'll help you out here so they apparently have so they keep them uh, stored in buildings owned by a private aerospace contractor in Las Vegas, right? They apparently have material compositions that aren't found naturally on Earth and would be exceptionally expensive to replicate. So this is all from the ATIP program. This is all from what they've talked about from there. Okay. Okay. Um, according to a... Which is crazy. That's a crazy thing to admit. Do you think they have that element that Bob Lazar was talking element about? Element 115? Yeah, but the, the, stable, the stable version. Stable el- version? Oh. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Mm. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you do think Let's that. keep this down the middle, folks. We're doing straight right. facts today. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, fuck uh, yeah. I think oh, no, I'm, the, I'm the weird guy. I'm the, I want to be the weird <laughs> Hell yeah, one. they have 115. You, you can be the straight man and I'll be the one that's like, what about the aliens? Because I'm genuinely intrigued. Good. Our buddy Florian's rolling his eyes right now. But guess what, dude? <laughs> I don't give a single shit. <laughs> you go live in your boring ass land. He, he lives in like Norway. He does not. Den- he lives in Germany. He does not deny aliens. He just says Irish. it's unlikely. Have you heard shut his up. accent? And by the way, we're talking about one of our patrons. Shout out to Patreon. Yes, shout out to Patreon. Shout out to Florian. He's a, he's a buddy. Uh, <laughs> so according to 2009, a 2009 Pentagon briefing that summarized in the New York Times, the United States was incapable of defending itself against some of the technologies that was discovered through this program. And this was a briefing that was... I mean, they were saying this, trying to get more funding. I see. Uh, so you have to take that into account as well. I, uh, yeah, okay. I could see that. You know what I mean? Basically, if there were aliens, we would lose. So that's what they're saying. That is correct. Yeah. If it's something that can fly into water but have no resistance from water whatsoever, it can fly from yeah. water into the atmosphere, no no resistance whatsoever. Yeah. We're, we're, we're done. doomed. That's the thing. I think they can make us worship it even. That's the biggest case against aliens <laughs> is like if they are here, why haven't they taken over or have they? Dude, all Jesus had to do was like make liquor. So I think we would probably worship this thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, probably. Jesus made liquor and he could he could he could do the Chris Angel thing where you're walking on uh, across a pool. That's what he did. Yeah. Jesus walked on he, You think that's not cool? No, it's super cool. He also died for our sins, asshole. No, I know, asshole, but I'm talking about what made people go, oh, fuck, this is Jesus guy. Did an alien die level. for our sins? Not yet, but not that we know of. Well, the thing that made us go, that's next level, is that he died for our sins. No, I know, but okay. also but also, people at the time were very fascinated that he could walk across all the pools and I, all the I'm, spots. I'm fascinated. Right. You're not fascinated by that? If Dude, you saw that right now? No, I would be. But oh, you're so I've jaded? I've seen it. You're so jaded? I've seen it on the Chris Angel Mind Freak program. Yeah, but that's... So I'm not as blown away I could, by that I anymore. could do that with TV editing, too. He doesn't do TV editing. Don't say that. <laughs> yes, he does. What are you talking about right now? <laughs> Shut are you Are you being that. honestly serious? Yes. You actually think that he uses TV editing yes, to get I away do. with his tricks? Yeah, So I you do. think he's not actually walking on... I think he has things planned. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think he's a magician. That is... Jesus did it on his own. How do you know that? I know, because I read the Bible. Listen, Jesus four-stepped a, a, an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Did you know that? He four-stepped it. How do you know that? That's what, it's in, that's what they said in the Bible. That's not what they said in the yeah, Bible. Yeah, have you read he, the Old Testament? They didn't talk about the Olympics. No, they said he four-stepped an Olympic-sized <laughs> swimming pool. <laughs> no, they did not. Yes, horizontally. <laughs> All right, anyway, we're getting off track. Vertically, he, he did a 25 step. No, I had a legit thought, and you were getting okay, off track I'm now. Sorry. By the way, like... Duh, like, okay, if there's aliens and they haven't taken over yet, it's because they said we're containers for the souls, so. True. And by the way, when I say four-stepped, I meant he hopped, just for everybody out there who's going to be assholes about that and be like, you know, I just want to make sure that they understand that's how. Oh, hopped? Yeah, he he hopped horizontally across an Olympic-sized swimming pool, but he hopped from step to step to step, like being balanced on every step. That's what Jesus did. Okay, so back to this. I'm thoroughly confused. <laughs> There's no need to be. Okay. Back um, to this. So some of the accounts. I thought you were doing straight facts today. We are. Okay. Some of the accounts 
occurred near nuclear facilities. We've talked about this in the past, Mm -hmm. right? It seems to be some kind of weird connection. In November 2004, the USS Princeton was air uh, escorting the USS Nimitz off the coast of San Diego. Two fighter jets were ordered to investigate mysterious aircraft they had been tracking for weeks. Okay, and this is this is the David Fravor sighting that I've talked about before, where he was one of the pilots like there that day, mm-hmm. and he describes a disturbance just below the ocean's surface that caused the water to roil around it. Then suddenly, a white 40-foot tic-tac-shaped craft moving like a ping-pong ball above the water. Tic-tac shape? What's that? Like a tic-tac. Oh. Yeah. Oh, like the candy. Exactly, like the candy. So he says the water's roiling, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden... It moves like a ping pong above the water, which means like, you know how, how if you put a ping pong ball in water, it's just kind of moving around with all kinds of buoyancy? Yeah. It, he said it moved like that. It just didn't oh. make any sense the way like that it was. a buoy? Exactly. He saw a buoy. But it was a spacecraft. <laughs> he, he just saw a buoy. <laughs> he saw, imagine. <laughs> I, I, so I see crushed. that too. If they, if they look, if they reviewed <laughs> the footage and like, that's a fucking buoy, dude. Like that's an orange buoy, dude. Wouldn't that be incredible? <laughs> Dude, now we're the people on the news. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. The v- I know. We, I was making fun of them for doing mom and dad jokes, but I love mom and dad jokes. <laughs> Thanks for cleaning that up. Too. Yeah. Okay. So the vehicle also began. He talked about this too on Joe Rogan. You can hear the whole thing about his account. Oh, tight. It's pretty great. I so we're just a podcast it, like, that refers times. people to other podcasts? Yeah. Also, if you want to check out the U.S. Navy's podcast, they, they talk about this extensively. No, they wow. Don't. Oh. Um thought we were doing straight facts the vehicle began mirroring his the, his plane's movements right mm-hmm. and then when he dove at it it zipped away and he said it was moving like 800 miles an hour like the radar could barely pick it up before it just appeared somewhere else like miles and miles away mm. and go figure oh go ahead oh i was just thinking like what if it's like our version of the the mars the rover like where it's not mm-hmm. manned by humans. There's no alien. Like, well, we would be the aliens of Mars if we were in it. But um, like there's no one in it. But like that's just like a drone basically. Well, you know what's interesting actually is how did our man Bob Lazar in the 1980s describe UFOs moving? It was very similar to the ping pong above water thing. Mm. He said there's like a wobble to it. It has yeah. this odd wobble that like looks confusing like it looks like it's drunk yeah kind of like a weather balloon <clears throat> exactly like a weather <laughs> balloon <clears throat> so um the pentagon has said the funding for the program ran out in 2012 no more a tip but as the head of a tip resigned he claimed the project was alive and well <laughs> <laughs> So there's just a difference between now and then right like right. the 60s and 70s like after roswell there was so much secrecy, like even like Area 51, they wouldn't even disclose what the fuck it was until the 90s. Yeah. So now it's just, we're just in a different world. There are conspiracy theories that Marilyn Monroe was murdered because JFK told her about aliens. God, you really, I mean. I wish we, I want to do a conspiracy theory episode. We should, because the here's the thing about that. Huh? No one would believe her. Well, they were scared enough. Like who would believe her? Because well, she was at the time. I'm I'm not talking about Marilyn Monroe as we understand her now. Yeah, she was at the time seen as very dumb. Yeah, but she also slept with the president. Exactly. Well, exactly. I see. So you're saying that connection? I'm not. Yeah. Was enough. Oh, I think that. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So, uh, Harry Reid, one of the guys who helped fund the program, right? Senate Majority Leader, formerly from Nevada. He's he says that there was a guy named Bob Bigelow. And when he was a young man, he heard a story uh, uh, from his grandparents driving from Mount Charleston near Las Vegas where they saw a so-called flying saucer, for lack of a better description. And he became, he, and this guy like carried that with him, kind of like my story a little bit. Mm-hmm. He ended up becoming a very wealthy man. And he would pay for these conferences about UFOs and he'd bring in scientists, academics, and obviously nutcases would leak into. Yeah. And people, there were people just trying to figure out what all this shit was. And then this guy, Bob, this rich guy, was sending Harry Reid a lot of stuff. And what interested him so much in this particular topic is that so many people had seen these things in the air and they were really weird. Yeah. And he was in Washington 
in the Senate. He gets a call from the rich guy and he goes, look, I got a really weird letter here. Can I have a courier bring it to you? And he didn't want to send it to him over the normal channels. Mm -hmm. And then the letter said, I am a senior longtime member of this security agency. I'm not going to say. And I have an interest in what you've been working on. I also want to go to your ranch in Utah. Uh, so the, the, the rich guy had a huge ranch. And apparently all this crazy stuff goes on like around that area, you know, Utah, yeah. like Nevada, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and apparently like when when the Native Americans like were in those areas, they talked about things that were similar hmm. to what we're talking about even today. Wow. So that was part of why Harry Reid was like, okay, there's even like some interesting history to this. Right. Um, so he calls the rich guy back and he goes, look, I'll meet. I will meet with this guy. And so that's when the program started. It was to study the aerial phenomena aspect of this. And they decided that they wanted to fund it with black money because they didn't want to have a debate where no one, like everyone doesn't even know what they're talking about. They're all in the Senate floor arguing for money. He just wanted to get this thing funded. Right. So um, then he has said they have hundreds of different accounts right they have what's black money sorry like is it just like secret money what yeah there's there's reportedly trillions of dollars well billions there's there's billion there's trillions of dollars that have gone missing from like the defense department's budget and a lot of uh people believe that it goes into these the the black money uh, projects Hmm. like funded by the government like delta force was one for a long time like delta force is um basically like the avengers of our military where they take people from every single like it's not all one branch they take the best of the best from every branch and then you go get into delta and then you're like running black ops all the time i see yeah all over the world like in places that you'd think americans aren't they they maybe very well be are i see yeah so and that's all funded with money that they don't tell us about they don't even tell a lot of other congress people about Hmm. usually just the speaker of the house and some other very high-ranking people on the intelligence community know whoa yeah i super hate that stuff by the way too yeah because who the fuck knows where the money's going exactly and what it's going into right but that's just reality right now (laughs) i just don't like the idea of it that like it's a bunch of taxpayer dollars and there's no transparency. So yeah, Harry Reid was asked, are there things about this program that you cannot discuss publicly? He says, yes, Hmm. right? Now I'm going to get into a very, very, very sexy part of this show, but Mm -hmm. I believe that we are at the break point. So when I come back, we are gonna talk about pyramid UFOs (gasps) that were just confirmed by the Navy. (gasps) UFOs around the pyramids. When we return, when we return. on the Shit They Don't Tell You podcast, on the Sticky Studios Network. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor today, Green Chef. Green Chef is yummy, yummy in my tummy. Listen, Green <laughs> Chef, it's a it's a name after my own heart. After yeah. all, my last name it is, is green. associated with a she- with chefs. Oh, wait. Well, it's also green. Oh, right. But yeah. no, I'm thinking about how like lettuce, right. green beans, all that kind of stuff. Like a lot of chefs use those chefs? Sort of ingredients. Chefs? Yes, a lot of chefs use, <laughs> use those ingredients. And so I was thinking right. about that connection. But yeah. I, brought up something I think about how you're the antithesis of a chef. Um, I've re- recalled many a burned oven in my days with you, but, um, but I helped, I took the hell of a carrot cake one time. Yeah. And green chef helps you cook. So you don't have to be a hell of a chef cause it'll be the chef for you. It's the most sustainable meal kit is offsetting a hundred percent of its direct carbon emissions and plastic packaging in every box. So you can feel great about what you're eating and how it got to your table. And listen, we've worked with HelloFresh in the past too. And we love both of these companies. Yes. They are so, they make life so much easier. And, they're friends in real life as well. Well, there you go. They are, are they all chefs? They're all chefs together, which See? is huge for my family. I know that. Come on, go to greenchef.com slash 90STDTY and use code 90STDTY. That's 90STDTY. To get $90 off, including free shipping. How much more can we bring this deal to you? Exactly. We're bringing this deal. 
No matter your diet, we got you. Okay, shout out to Pretty Litter. You ever heard of it? I have. I have you it have. My, I have it in my home. We have four cats. Four of them. We are authorities on the we're subject. We're those people that have four cats. And uh, we go through a lot of litter at a time. And if you know a state to move to where you can have more cats, let us know. You, you can imagine the amount of kitty litter we go through. We actually have five litter boxes, so we need a lot of litter. And what's cool about Pretty Litter is it's litter reinvented, unlike traditional litter. Pretty Litter's super light crystals. Dust they, free. Tr- they trap odor and release moisture, resulting in dry, low-maintenance litter that doesn't smell. It's, it's manufactured true. with a de-dusting process. So when you pour it out, you don't choke on it. But you don't smell it. No, you don't. You have no idea. Yeah, like it's right outside your office and you never smell it. I don't smell it ever. I really don't actually. I actually, like I run because the treadmill is in the room that has the kitty, kitty litter boxes. Yep. And I run right next to the litter box. I can't smell anything. I sometimes at night, 1230 in the morning, I stick my head in the litter box. And I <laughs> don't smell a thing. No, you don't. I actually don't smell a thing though. Pretty Litter arrives safely at our door in a small, late, a lightweight bag that lasts up to a month. So now that we get litter bags auto-shipped, we don't have to deal with last-minute trips to the store, which is awesome. And then shipping is free. But above all else, here's why Pretty Litter is a pet parent's hero. It's a health indicator. Do you know about this? Yes. Well, tell them. Well, it changes color based on when it detects underlying potential issues, yeah. which I don't think anybody else even has anything close to that. That's magic. So get the world's smartest litter without leaving home by visiting prettylitter.com and using promo code STDTY for 20% off your first order. That's prettylitter.com, promo code STDTY for 20% off. Prettylitter.com, promo code STDTY. Okay, welcome back to Shit That Don't Tell You, the only show you'll hear on the Sticky Studios Network. Is that your... That's my new thing. I'm going to do it every time. It sounds like a baseball announcer. I think people are loving it. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got got a lot the of reviews feedback. are in? On, during the break. Yeah, a lot yeah, of good feedback. Nice. Okay, folks. So if you're not listening... We're all listening, playing uh, Best Fiends during the break. Damn right they are. Yeah. Because there's the new levels out. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you're, li- if you're not watching the show on YouTube, I feel a little bit sorry for you right now. Only because... We're about to actually watch this footage, and I'm going to send this to Mark. <gasps> cool. And we're going to show this on the show as well. This is U.S. Navy filmed footage of pyramid-shaped UFOs. Okay, so we're going to put that on screen right now. I'm going to show Nikki right now as well. Okay, so live reaction. Live reaction. You've never seen this, true? No, I have not. I didn't show you this on purpose. No. Whoa. Hey, what? Whoa, there's tons of them. A swarm of them. Whoa, it looks like, um, it looks like asteroids, the game, like, <laughs> asteroids. Don't be a news person. <laughs> no, but it does. Like, oh, no. why is it all green too? Because it's filmed from the Navy. So they were, they had oh. night vision on it. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy. No, but it's funny that like, I don't know if life imitates art, but you know, asteroids is like the most simplistic form. It's just shapes shooting other shapes. Yes. And it, and it's in space. But like it, it looks like that. It looks like that. Imagine responding to seeing advanced technology from another world. Yeah. With it looks like asteroids. <laughs> it does. Honey, look in here. It looks like asteroids. <laughs> God, this is well, why they don't want to make contact with us because they're like listen. we're so stupid. No, we could get along. <laughs> we could get along. We'll be friends. Dude, I'm just sharing part of my culture with them. I understand. And if they, like if they want to share some of their culture with me, cool. Like I could pull out an Atari. We could like bond over it. So nobody knows what the hell these things are. That's crazy. Yeah, that's it. It definitely defies physics. Like exactly. as far as we know, the way that they move how and the way it that they that? move, like all bobbly like this, and then they're they're triangles. I feel like I'm on DMT. I've never tried DMT, but I feel like this is what people talk about when they try it. Yeah, where it's like shapes and creatures that you've never seen before, and they're moving in ways you've never seen before. I've also never seen because you always hear about triangle shaped UFOs. Yeah, and even the one over Nevada in 2006, the famous Phoenix Lights incident. That was described as a triangle shaped one oh. that darkened all of the stars around it. So it was like a gigantic UFO sighting 
that happened over the Phoenix area. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have heard of that. I didn't know it was triangle shaped. And it was triangle shaped. But, but it floated over. It floated over. But yeah. the people who were there, the eyewitnesses who were all made fun of by the local news mm-hmm. at the time, they said that when they looked up where they're under it, they could see around it, but they couldn't see through it. Uh, so it was one giant craft is craft, how they yeah. were describing it. One giant mass. Wow. Fucking crazy. It was huge. I wonder huge. What, what they want. They're I, just, like, I think observing? they're big dicking it up there. Just they're going just like, observing? check this shit. That's kind of cool. I mean, we do that in like the um, in like Hawaii and like Hanama Bay. Like, I feel like all the fish probably think that. Like, we're just like there. We do too much though. We're like ominous. Yeah, we're there from nine to five every day until they close. At That's 5:30. true. Yeah, the, but originally maybe like not those fish. They're jaded, but the other fish in the sea, like when we snorkel, the first time they're probably like, okay, that's a weird shape, but. Hanama Bay is like opening month. Trying to eat me, maybe. so that's okay, kind of cool. Okay, so do you know who George Knapp is? No. Or Jeremy Corbell. So George Knapp, he is the guy who actually sourced the Bob Lazar interviews that we all oh. know about. Okay, so this this footage was somehow leaked to Jeremy Corbell, the guy behind the recent Bob Lazar documentary, Bob Lazar, Aliens and UFOs. I didn't like that documentary. It was horrible because of the Mickey Rourke shit. Horrible. Oh, I did, not because of that. It just felt like the filmmaker was trying to make it about him and not like about he was. the stuff. That, it was very annoying. But George yeah. Knapp was the guy behind... Um, the Bob Bazaar initial like, okay, I like documentary. That I also right. like his last name. He's he's great. He I'm used to he that. used to co host on um uh, this this show called Coast to Coast with Art Bell. And he's he's a he's a legend in the community, right? So he was the he was one of the sources for this. Can I just really quick I'm really buzzed. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so this pyramid craft, right? They're they were joined by three other strange objects. This was this was just released recently. That's so and cool. Confirmed by the US Navy as genuine and authentic. How can they say that the pyramids were not the ideas of aliens then if their crafts look like this? So I've never seen anything with dimension like this. Yeah. Like that has a pyramid dimension. It's not just a flat yeah, triangle, triangle craft. It's like it's like dimension. An actual pyramid. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Do you think they were trying to leave statues of their, like, to like, like leave clues? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I know people built it, by the way. Pentagon spokesperson Susan Go says that she can confirm the reference photos and videos were taken by Navy personnel. Yeah. Um, and the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force has included these incidents in their ongoing examinations. And while the Pentagon is corroborating all of this, DOD hasn't shed shit about it. Nobody else has really said anything about it except for them, right? The Pentagon. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a quote here that says, as we've said before, this is from that same woman, Susan Go, Pentagon spokesperson. As we've said before, to maintain operational security and to avoid disclosing information that may be useful to, pot- to potential adversaries, the DOD does not discuss publicly the details of either the observations or the examinations of reported incursions into our training ranges or designated airspace, so including boring. those incursions designated as UAPs. Yeah. So it's a big non-answer. But the Pentagon confirmed it. So it shows you there's some kind of interagency, old school shit going yeah. on with from DOD. Right. Yeah. What's DOD? Department of Defense. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the video of the incident clearly shows the triangle looking object for those of you listening who can't see it yeah it's hovering 210 meters above the vessel the the navy ship and three other ones swarm over the ship with it yeah there's a bunch of them there's another sighting where a spherical vehicle was observed by the crew of the uss omaha flying into the ocean and disappearing into the water similar to the favor incident yeah the uh the document the UAPTF documentation suggests the craft was thought to have sunk, but a subsequent search of the area uh, by a submarine revealed no wreckage. There's also uh, other sightings recorded the same day, March 2019, by an F-18 weapon systems officer using his iPhone camera. They reveal three UAPs seen near the Naval Air Station Oceana in Virginia. The objects all look similar and have come to be known as the sphere, the acorn, and the metallic blimp by the way that they they, they appeared. Um, and obviously some have speculated they could be weather balloons or foreign spy drones, but they are also being investigated by 
by this program. Can I say a theory? Please. That's not alien related? Yeah, sure. Okay. What if, hear me out, they're time traveling humans. It would fill in all the gaps because they're shapes we already know, but they're like from maybe resources that we haven't invented yet. And they don't want to interfere with the timeline continuum. It's so true. that's why they won't come out and be like, yo, this is what we are. To lose all their family photos if you did that. We've seen Back to the Future. Exactly. All exactly. your family photos get fucked all up. All the family photos and they might disrupt the future, all, all kinds of stuff. So like they want to like, maybe they sell it as commercial tourism. Like you want to go see how they yeah. used to live back in 2020, 21. Uh, and then, and so, but they don't want to get caught because like obviously they have air, they could take over, but then that would destroy everything that they are. So. Yeah, so you think that there's maybe perhaps some kind of advanced um, program in the future that regulates time travel. So it's like you can't go change and shit or work fuck you up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got you. Like, don't get caught, basically. I got you. Because I just, like, here's the thing. I, and I don't mean to veer this off topic because I know we're staying very factual, but, like, when it comes to aliens and, like, I I don't get the motive for not coming out and being like, yo, we're aliens because, like, they could totally take us. So, like what's like i don't get the motive and i need to fill in the gaps of motive or else my brain just like gets mad yeah so the time you know time traveling humans makes like it makes the gaps filled for me i don't listen there's a lot of people who think the time traveling humans is a thing oh yeah yeah for sure oh cool it's a thing out there oh look at me thinking i'm original no nah, you're just drunk second. you're just drunk as fuck well true yeah <clears throat> well that's not fair uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they're Canada's defense minister during the Cold War. He's now 94 years old. Uh-huh. He was their defense minister. Okay. He believes there are at least 80 species of aliens. Who's attacking de- Canada, by the way? <laughs> like, why do they need a defense minister? <laughs> I'm so sorry to the people of Canada. Listen, she's very... No, I'm just saying inebriated. no one's attacking them. Like, what, glaciers are attacking them? <laughs> That's so disrespectful. They have mooses who's invading? or mooses. They have sure. all kinds of foxes okay, out there. Okay, so who's attacking that? What are you talking about? Who's attacking that? Foxes under, attack under your porch and they so can destabilize the, your foundation. You're saying the defense of Canada goes after Mises and foxes? Yes. All right. <laughs> so he, while he was doing that job, mm-hmm. like checking all the Mises population, mm-hmm. he, he found that he evidenced, well, he believes, he was their defense minister, he believes there are 80 species of aliens that have been visiting Earth for millennia. Like a picture him with a slinky <laughs> on his desk. He doesn't have anything to do. You are so fucking annoying right now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. One so group. He, yeah. Yeah. One group is called the Tall Whites. Uh huh. Okay. Very, I've heard very all funny. This. Yes. Go ahead. It's me. Okay. Yeah. Nice. No, you wish. I know. You wish, pal. Um, because they 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 can reach basketball goal height or the Nordic blondes because they look like they're from Denmarkish. Yeah, I've heard about these. They live in um Mount uh. I don't know, Mount something, but there's a, there's like a story is that they are, there's a population that lives there and they sing really pretty and people have heard these like songs and they feel otherworldly and people have gone to try to find this population, but there's like, oh, we have to do a whole episode This is in Oregon, right? The mountain or uh, I, th- I or thought Washington. it was in California, but oh, okay. I, I think it, I thought it was called, I don't know. I have to ask my Mount friend. Mount Sinai? No, uh, no. Okay. But um, but basically, like, there people have gone searching f- because they've heard these things. Like, they've heard voices. They've heard. They've seen weird things there, and there's like um, there's like people guarding it, like that are decoys that try to like take you off track. So he believes also that um, we're not doing the sorts of things which like to be good stewards of the earth, right? And that that the species that are visiting us don't like that. And they've made it very clear. He says that a lot of our current technological breakthroughs were taken from these ETs. Mm-hmm. Microchips, fiber optics, taken off crashed alien vehicles, reverse engineered. And they have uh, a special technology that would solve climate change as well. But, um, and this is part of the part of the story that gets sad, saddest for me. Okay is because he says that the Illuminati are hiding it from us. 
So. Well, that makes sense. They're shady. I know, but it was, it was so good until you got there. But how is it so good? Like, how because does Because of this... branding, but how as does soon he... as I hear the word Illuminati, I start sure, to sure, laugh sure. in my but, head. But I'm saying, but like, how is the other part not crazy? Like that, did he talk to these beings and they told him that? Like, what the hell? No, he. I have no idea how he knows this shit. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. But if he, if you're talking about the Canada defense minister, yeah. this is a guy who could look at moose tracks and know exactly where the hell they are. So how is this part crazy and this part isn't for you? It's not. It's just the way that other people hear it. Oh, okay. For me personally, not really. But other people hear it and they go, ha ha, wackadoo, that's fucking oh, you stupid. Don't think, no, people don't think the Illuminati is real? <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, they've yeah. done a good job of that, man. Look, look, do, do we all know that Jeffrey Epstein had a sex trafficking empire and it involved governments and places all over the world and yeah. people were covering for him? Yes. Do we ever go, hey, that seems like, what everyone talks about when they talk about the Illuminati? No, of course not. Because the Illuminati has been branded. Right. Yeah, like they've made it into a meme. It's a joke. I get it. Just like the same way the CIA used to make fun of uh, UFO sightings to yeah. people by supplying disinformation to make people seem crazy while they si while they singularly investigated it exactly. as well. Exactly. When we know all these facts about how the human, how, how human minds work and how like these things are facts and they happened... Why is it crazy to believe that if you have all the money and power in the world that you wouldn't form a secret society like that? Right. Like you can't you can't interact with normal everyday. We people. know that if you have a certain amount of money, you you're, you're, laws don't seem to apply. Exactly. So is it that crazy to think that that there people might work together? Band at together. That? Exactly. That's <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I know the word Illuminati might carry some like conspiracy. It always does. But, but if you just think of like the most elite people that have money you can't even fathom, power you can't even fathom, What's what do they have left to, to work for other than banding together and doing secret shit? So another man named Philip Corso, he was a military guy, right? Yeah. He um, had a long military career. Um, he served uh, after World War II as an Army intelligence captain. He worked on the Pentagon's foreign intelligence, uh, foreign technology desk in the 1960s. Um, he came out in 1997 and basically said Roswell happened. It was a it was a decades long cover up, mm -hmm. and he also was aware that what they investigated found that the there was reverse engineering of technology found on alien spacecraft, and this is how the world got lasers, particle beams, microchips, Kevlar. Like all the kind of yeah. like leaps that we had came from this kind of it makes shit sense. Like that. And that's Phil Corso, who was in our military, the United States, and then Canada's defense minister is saying similar shit. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it lines up. It, it lines yeah, up. It, it just lines up if you wanted to take a look like, at these this. These are people like, why would they risk their job, their titles, their um, credentials? Like, why would they risk that to tell you some bullshit? Exactly. So that's part of, you know, there's a lot. I mean, there's, there's a lot of this stuff. Um, but there's a guy named Roscoe Helen Cotter. He served as that the... That sounds made up. It's not a real name, right? It sounds like an alien name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after he served as the first CIA director, appointed, appointed by Truman, mm. um, he takes a gig at a, a new research group. They're called the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena. And its purpose was pressuring the government to disclose what it knew about UFOs, like Project Blue Book, like all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And they... He's he was the first CIA director. He oh. he wrote open letters that said things like it's time for the truth to be brought out in con open congressional hearings. When he pointed out in 1960 that the Air Force had investigated 6312 UFO reports to date but was seemingly trying to hide the facts, the military reminded Americans that quote no physical evidence, not even a minute fragment of a so-called not even a minute fragment of a so-called flying saucer has ever been found. When they continue to lie to us, like, why? Why is it? Uh, why do people automatically laugh when you talk about what could be? You know, it's be, it's be, it's just the same thing as as branding, right? Like, if right. you can just make someone seem like they're silly, then they're silly, nobody yeah. wants to nobody even wants to admit be associated that they to them. with the silly person. Yeah, I get it, but who, what, so they'd rather be associated with the historical liars. Uh, they don't see that, that like that, <laughs> but, dude. I just yeah. heard George B W. Bush came out the other day, and he's talking about how he wishes there was more truth 
that got talked about in the world. And I'm like, bro, you're the weapons of mass destruction exactly. guy. But nobody's asking him that in the, in the interviews. But that's what I'm that's saying. That's the thing that's is frustrating. That how do people not see like these facts laid out, like what, what it looks like, the bigger picture? I get... I get frustrated, I guess, when people just tunnel vision into like, oh, I don't want to look silly because like, uh, you know, like there's until there's solid proof of aliens. Like I get I get all that. Like I'm with you. Like I'm I'm with you on the logic train. But to be so closed off to any possibility of any sort of entity landing or, or, or anything when all of these military personnel have said stuff and the government has continued to lie to us and it's come out more and more that the government has lied to us. Yes. Like, why continue to be like, oh, so I'm silly. waiting for the government to tell me. Yeah, like when that's they what's, just that's what's continuously absurd. lie to you. It's, it's, like so a, funny. it's like people are addicted to an abusive relationship. Yes. It's we're all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're all in a fucked up relationship. Like, no, I know they love me. I know yeah. they take care of me. Like, oh yeah, they lie sometimes, but like, I know like deep down they really love me. Exactly. Do they? Do they love you? So do you know who Pavel and Maria Popovich are? No. Okay. They were um, husband and wife okay. duo. And Pavel was a very rena- world renowned cosmonaut. He went to space. Okay. Why doesn't he call himself an astronaut? They call them cosmonauts over there. What's the there. difference? I mean, they got to be assholes about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where is this? Russia. Oh, cosmonaut sounds cool, though. I think it sounds sicker than astronaut. Yeah. Like, it just sounds... Because I've heard astronauts like too cosmos. much. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cosmonaut, I'm like, whoa, what's that? An astronaut, like, has ass in it. Like <laughs> <laughs> I do like that, though. That's <laughs> that's true. You got me back. Yeah, okay. I like astronaut better. <laughs> uh, so, they hold, among their titles... Um, well, he was he was the cosmonaut, right? Uh-huh. She was the most cele- celebrated female pilot okay. in, in the Soviet Union. Okay, so they liked air a lot. They sure did. Yeah. Um, they both have the titles of being the first, or the sixth human in orbit. That's Pavel. She was the first Soviet female to break the sound barrier Whoa. and holder of more than 100 aviation world records. Good for them. Once their careers ended, both of them got into ufology. What year is this? This was... Um, or what decade? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I didn't write that down. Um, basically, they both got into UFO stuff okay. after their careers ended, right? Pavel headed up Russia's UFO Association. He claimed to have seen an unidentified aircraft zip past his airplane on a trip home from Washington, D.C. with a group of scientists. People on board said it was triangular, brightly lit, and rocketed by at least a hundred thousand, uh, by at least a thousand miles an hour. Wow. Uh, Marina says that she saw you multiple UFOs and a weird creature. She saw like a big, really? foot, a Bigfoot creature. That's a, what she says. A Bigfoot creature. That's what she says. Like it looks like Bigfoot. She says a Bigfoot creature. Uh, she said after and after they divorced, she became uh, like pre- she started preaching about. I'm sorry. Hold on. First of all, like, did the Bigfoot come from the craft? She do, it doesn't say it here. Cause I hate Bigfoot. Like I, I do too. I hate the theory. I, I, I mean, too. I just I think Bigfoot sucks. Like we did a whole thing on it. They've never found shit. Yeah, exactly. It's so annoying. So like the fact that she's trying to claim that like a Bigfoot creature is associated with UFOs. Like I see them as two different worlds. Well, she completely. saw a creature, right? And she's with big a Bigfoot feet? creature. I don't think she's saying I saw a Bigfoot. Okay. She's saying like I saw a creature. A Bigfooted that, creature. A Bigfoot creature. Yeah. Maybe it's the Russian translation is just like, you know, she doesn't know that Bigfoot is like kind of a, uh, a cultural thing here. Right. She doesn't know that. Because fuck Bigfoot. Yeah, Bigfoot I sucks. Hate, I don't like it. I believe in, of course, everyone knows I believe in the abominable snowman, <laughs> but not Bigfoot. You didn't even know what he was. What were you talking about? You thought like the like the Yeti and an abominable snowman was a different thing, but they're they the same. Things. They're the same. No. the abo- Yeah, you, you were no, found the out later. The abominable snowman is, a, it, he was made of snow from children and he that's came to not life. Tr- that's Frosty the snowman. No, the, he that's sings Frosty. Frosty the snowman. No. But he is the abominable Get snowman. Get off it, Green. No, but he does. You don't know the story. You don't know the story. Okay, so she started you're talking. You're abominable. Don't say that about and me. And you're white as snow. Mark, cut that. Thank you. <laughs> um, so she says that. Um, oh, one sec, one sec. Nikki threw me off my whole fucking trail. Sorry. Okay, it's all good. There's a kitten behind this sign. You can't <laughs> see him, but he's so fucking cute. Okay. 
Marina claimed that the Soviet Union had pieces of five spaceships in its possession and reports of 14,000 UFO sightings. Yet for decades... 14,000? 14,000. And yet for decades, researchers were either fired or put in psychiatric hospitals. Her eventual book called UFO Glasnost, which I don't know what that means, some kind of Russian shit. Probably like UFO Wow or some shit. It sounds anti-Semitic. It talked about how... Um, Leonardo da Vinci, Jules Verne, and Ray Bradbury were all alien mediums, and that Mikhail Gorbachev, the the former Soviet leader, at the very end, alien mediums had the markings of extraterrestrial emissary because he's an epoch making phenomena. What's epoch? An epoch is. I'm glad that you asked that. An epoch is a period of time where, like, you're in a place like of importance for like a particular reason. Oh, so he's an epoch making. It's like phenomenon. a distinctive time. Oh. So he was like the, the catalyst for an epoch she feels. And he was part of the end of the Soviet Union. So who the fuck knows? Oh, okay. But it seems like she went a little cuckoo bananas. Yeah, it sounds like it. Like a little bit, right? He's like, there's, they're mediums for aliens. That's where all this shit goes. And that's where I want to get to now, right? Yeah. We just, we just laid out the whole fucking like kitten caboodle. Okay. But, this is where I believe we all have to pick and choose about what sounds what's crazy and what's crazy, not crazy, what sounds logical, what sounds like it has research behind it, what sounds like somebody's just saying shit. Right. Because well, I think a lot of this stuff gets bled and, and mixed in together. I also think that like just to let you know, and I know it's super far into the episode to say this, but I often say things on the internet and like especially on podcasts or um, like JK, like things where I'm reacting for a first time. These aren't my beliefs. Yeah. These are like theories that I think are ex- interesting to explore. Yeah. And I I think that people conflate the two sometimes. Like if I say something or I want to go down a, a certain pathway and like explore it, then people were like, oh, you believe she this. That, that. Yeah, and I just love exploring different ideas about stuff. The ideas that I like the most though are when you can follow a logical trail. So... Like when we were talking about the Illuminati earlier, to me, that's there's a logical psychological trail where, you know, if you look at the psychology behind serial killers, there's a pattern, right? There's a pattern of childhood trauma, usually animal torture in early childhood. You can you can see the, the pattern. There's also a pattern of people that come into a lot of money and power. They yeah. There's nothing left after that, so they do really crazy shit and they get together and they get away with it because they have a lot of money and power. So yeah, but Epstein me, killed himself in prison. Yeah. But and the cameras cut out. It was a random bug and the cameras cut out. Sorry about that. So to me, it's like, yes, it, it can be considered a conspiracy theory. And this is either just theories. I don't know for a fact. I don't have any evidence. I'm not in it. I don't know anybody in it. But it follows a logical trail for me. Yeah. The the person, like her saying, um, she, by the way, good kudos for her for being like, the first woman to break the sound barrier. Like that's all awesome shit. But to, I think sometimes people get on a crazy trail. Like they found out they've been lied to. So then they think everything's a lie and they kind of go into crazyville. And to like claim that people are alien mediums is a little too far. You gotta it's give me a little something. too far. It's like saying Beyonce has lizard eyes or movements. And I'm right. like, bro, come on. Oh, it's like the girl that said that Beyonce possessed her and forced her to like kill her friend or well, something. I want to hear her story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like to hear all the stories, right? Like, but I would love for, for Marina to take me down the logical trail of how she got there, but to to jump from point A to point B, like it just doesn't. Right. No, it's I don't. Wild. I don't it's see wild. the. I don't see the Even connect. At my most devil's advocate, yeah. I don't know how I get there. Exactly. And I want. But you to know, go there. you see flying pyramids on a camera. I mean, that's that's, that's some confirmed shit by that, the Navy, as we don't know what the fuck this is. If someone just said they saw flying pyramids, I'd be like, whatever the fuck, I don't care. Yeah, you're an like, idiot. yeah, like I, I'll take your story into mine, but to me, it's categorized in my brain as the same. Same as like fairy tales, like Rapunzel or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then you see video footage and it's like, okay, now it's in a new category. It's like, this shit actually happened. There are flying triangles. There are flying triangles now. Exactly. <laughs> like that's actually fact. It's now can be logged as fact. It's there's flying pyramids. So when we t- go, when we talk about like what's crazy and what's not, the closest to fact that we have seen proof of is the least craziest to me. Right. The government has lied to us. Facts, yes. So the government could lie to us again? That seems not that crazy to me. Right. 
and waiting for the government to confirm it before I agree yeah. that it's real is wild to me when they have lied to us for so many years for so many reasons. For so many things. So that's that's the other thing, right? Um, it's unfortunate that we get to this point now where everybody is basically saying like, um, I won't believe it unless I hear it from some official government source when the official government source yeah. has all kinds of reasons to lie to you. Well, and like why do you, you have military officials, like these are official branches of technically government mm-hmm. saying and citing and videotaping mm-hmm. it. So what more do you what more do you need? Uh, I need someone over their head to say you want that's real. The government that's what I'm saying. you like just buying into the government gaslighting and saying like that's the don't forget what you saw. Yeah. Forget what you saw. Weather balloons city. Okay. No. Those individuals are not the collective government agreeing with them. Yeah, so exactly. So that's what I need to wait for. Thank you. Right. <laughs> so, I don't yeah. know. Uh, you know, believe what you want. I I think I think I don't I don't like to jump to conclusions. I don't like that stuff. Um, also, when I say that, like people have talked about uh, a, an alien race that sings pretty in the mountains, and they they've tried to find it. That's all that I've heard. Like it's mm-hmm. not like, oh, I believe there's a culture out there that does it. It's just that's what I've heard, and that's all that I can say about that. Right. And if I wanted to be very lazy and take what you just said mm-hmm. and apply it to something else that happened, like there was a report that during the '60s when they were doing the moon. Um, uh, landing. landing that they heard sounds from outer space like like music oh. from the dark side of the moon yeah okay and it sounded like spooky alien music like sound like spooky space music like that you if you're on like um one of those free audio sites you're looking for spooky yeah, yeah, alien yeah. music it sounds like that right do you think that we stole that for, like with lasers and all the technology that we stole from alien culture do you think we stole the sound effects too i think we had them already <laughs> but it's great because they did like like all yeah. kinds of old space movies with those kinds of sounds in them yeah. but the astronauts at the time reported hearing this music right and the and the, um, nasa said basically you're list, you're hearing like a, a probe that's having interference from saturn but that's what I'm saying. Like I could connect these two things, yeah. and here you talking about aliens sa- singing on a mountain, and oh well, on the dark side of the moon they heard music, and then we put that together and go, look, see, yeah, there's some like, greater conspiracy. There's some connections, and it's it's really you can sucks. observe connections, right? But that's as far as you can go. I observe observations, and so for me, when I see this this pyramid thing, when I see the Tic Tac sh- um, um, video that we all saw years ago. So especially if you listen to the show for that long, mm-hmm. the tic tac shape from favors incident, I just see things I can't explain, and I wonder what the fuck they are. And then I put that together with the fact that the government's been lying to us for decades about all kinds of things, yes. including this, and that they're now disclosing it after several other countries who um, were way more forthcoming with their people have already done so. I am less inclined to care as much about their official disclosure, other than the fact that I can maybe catch catch more people in the net now who mm-hmm. before were like no fucking way and they had their scissors out at all yeah. times and honestly like full disclosure like i don't have a dog in the race like i don't care like there's yeah. until an alien form interferes with our way of life on earth there's really no reason to like care or be intense about it i i also don't understand when people get so intense about like like he did like mad about it like we're just exploring like things that possibly could be but if it in the if it interferes with any of their belief systems that's when people will lash oh, out oh i see so that, could, that could be yeah so well then that's the other thing too is like i mean like jesus and aliens can coexist so i'm telling you man jesus did a five hopper across an olympic size i don't know pool. what these hopper things are <laughs> no, so you know how he walked on water yeah. The context of that is that he five hopped an what Olympic What is the five hop? What is high five hop? You said four hop before. So he five. Well, he four. It was a four hop, <laughs> but it was a five hop because when you land on the surface, like on the surface after di- like dismounting from the water, uh-huh. that is technically the five. Oh, hop. like if you skip a rock or something? No, no, no. When you're jumping from the water to the edge of the pool, uh-huh. that's the fifth hop. But but a lot of people say that he did it four hops because that, that was all hopped on the water. I Does that make know. sense? I don't know. It doesn't make sense at all. So think of an Olympic sized swimming pool. Yes, I'm thinking. Turn it on its side. Okay. If you want to traverse an Olympic sized swimming pool quicker, you don't go the lengthwise, you go the widthwise. Okay. Jesus five hopped it. Like he hopped across it. He did. That's when he walked on the water. Like five times? 
Like no, hop no. like a bunny? Yeah, hop like a bunny five times. Exactly. One foot, then the other foot, then I don't the get, other foot. I don't get the bit. There's no bit here. That's how Jesus walked on water. But people don't, don't ever talk about the context. Okay, but what difference does it make? Can you five hop ag- across a swimming pool? No, nobody can. Okay, then. But that's amazing. Okay. <laughs> but I saw Chris Angel do it, too, so it's not that interesting anymore. I see. Yeah. That's why this is coming about, because Chris Angel did it. I saw him do it. Okay. I saw it. I didn't see Jesus do it. I well, heard you were, he did. You weren't alive. But nobody even has any account of it. So how unoriginal of Chris Angel then? I think Chris Angel showed that it could be done by anybody. Anybody? Can you do it? If you gave me enough time, I could figure it out. Can you rise from the dead after three days? Do we know that he did that though? Yeah, it's written in the Bible. Guess what? Chris Angel did it too. He, no, he didn't. Yeah, he autoerotic asphyxiated himself in a Mark, closet. Mark, feel free to cut any time. And then he Thank you for reanimated. listening to Shit They Don't Tell You. Three days this later. This has been great. It's, it's Nikki and Steve here. Let, let us know in the comments what you think about aliens. Don't let us know in the comments what you think about Chris Angel versus Jesus. It's too heated. Yeah.